Okay. Uh, boy, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I in your name. I, Kyle Engstrom. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. The Constitution of the State of Iowa. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I'll faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties of the office of city council of the office of city council in the city of Boone, Iowa, in the city of Boone, Iowa, as now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. Congratulations. Now we're going to get a finish here. And then you can have your family come up. Yeah. Oh, you want to see that? <laughs> Bring your family up. <laughs> so Kyle will fill it. He'll uh, his next term will be in November, correct? So we won the special election and did very well. So I want to congratulate Kyle and welcome to City Council. Thanks. Okay, next up, update of Boone County Emergency Management Department, Chris Hayes. I could stand up here. Sure. Yeah. I was told to be brief. I got 30 seconds, otherwise I'm getting kicked out. So <laughs> my name's Chris Hayes. I'm the Boone County Emergency Manager. For those of you that I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, uh, I'm just coming to give you kind of an update on what we're working on. So uh one of the major things we're working on right now is the outdoor warning sirens. What we're doing with those is we're upgrading them to the new ISIC system that the radio system is currently on from the old VHS system. We're in the process of getting bids on that right now. Uh, emergency management is going to try to put the bills for that so the cities won't have to worry about that. We're doing that clear across the county. Uh, we're also looking at building a command trailer for countywide use. We had the RV for a while and that didn't really work out so well. So we're hoping with the command trailer, we're going to get it in aluminum. So it'll be lightweight. Every agency can pull it with a pickup. Uh, we currently have bids for that. We're just waiting to secure a little more funding. And hopefully we will have that in the process by the end of the fall or by the end of fall. Um, one of the other things we're working on is we're working with the sheriff's office to update search and rescue in county search and rescue. One of the things we want to do with that is take some of their boats and move them out to some of the fire departments in the county just to kind of improve a faster response time in the event of a water rescue, that kind of situation. Uh, also work on some training, cooperative training throughout the county with search and rescue, such as water rescue and ice water or ice rescue. And then recently we just completed the school safety grants uh, assessments. So hopefully the schools will should be getting that access to that $50,000 here shortly. I haven't heard anything on it yet, but all, it's all in the state's hands now. So we're also looking to snowball off of that. And we're going to be bringing in some active shooter training into the county to try to incorporate both first responders and school administrations. Um, we're also working on some kind of some countywide planning for and uh, critical incidents like active shooters. And then right now, just the rest of the stuff we're working on, Rag Ride doesn't really affect the city of Boone. Lucky for you guys this year. Um, and then we're just doing our usual updates on our countywide plans. So, awesome. That's the that's the highlight. Hopefully, kept it under a minute. I have a question. So, yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about the active shooter. I wondered if we had any training with that in our school systems. So right now, I'm still fairly new. We, we haven't had anything since I come on. Okay. Uh, but I know that, for instance. Yeah, so um, we do alert training with the school every, before the start of every school year for all the staff at the school. 
Um, we have an alert instructor as well, the school does as well, so we uh, assist them with that training every year. Um, they don't do, the school district at this time does not do answer regular training with the students. Um, all of the staff has up-to-date alert training. Okay, the staff does. Do they do any practice like how to evacuate the building or anything like that? Do you know, is that part of it? They, to my knowledge, they do not do any of that training internally. And that's one of the things we want to work with the schools on more is to get that integrated with our responders. So that way we understand how each other works yeah. during an incident like that. And we are bringing in several FEMA and Homeland Security classes, one of which uh, hasn't been done in the state of Iowa yet. So Boone will be the first county to do that. So, Very good. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, so thank you very much. Thanks for your thank time, you guys. Bet. Thanks, Chris. Good job on the time. <laughs> okay, next up, uh, Boone County Chamber, Jennifer. I haven't been in my office for 20 minutes. Well, I have a map for the um, for the street. And so um, that's something I can certainly send you guys in terms of what we're looking at for, for Copper Valley. Um, let me start with the So Benny Hanson, thanks for having me. Um, I have taken on the role of executive director of the chamber. And so Mike left us uh, mid-March. And so uh, since then I've, I've been, in, I've taken on this role, certainly still learning a lot. And so um, let me know certainly if I'm missing anything. Um, we're, uh, we were working on a lot too. So one of the things that we wanted to do was um, really focus in on our membership and really, um, as, as I've kind of mentioned to a few people, good chambers live and die by their membership. And so with we went through the renewal process um, in December, we're still kind of working through that. Um, and with the, uh, we, we've added 16 new members since, since December alone. And so we've got another 10 or so that are on um, in, the, in the pipeline so far. Um, one of the other things, of course, is pupper billing. And so with that, I wanted to share a little bit of what we're doing with pupper billing. I've had a lot of conversations about some of the changes, but um, we're really working on focusing those activities about 24 different events and such. Um, but many of them we're really focusing on bringing to Surrey Street. So um, in the past, I know, for example, we've had the concert behind the chamber building um, and using a lot of, of that space up off of ninth. Um, so currently we're going to be actually putting the stage, if, if we're good, um, putting the stage up on ninth and, uh, and story. So in the intersection, having all the seating behind it. Um, 8th Street, the, the green space will be used quite extensively with uh, entertainment both on Friday and during Saturday, food trucks in that area, a lot of activities and events on 8th Street. Um, and then as you go down 7th and uh, from 8th down to 6th, be utilized quite a bit with the car show, as well as um, the, of, of course, the, the parade route in itself. A um, couple of things I'd like to promote, or I guess really kind of announce, is that we have established a water park um, with our kids' activities. So um, we realize that it's August and we realize it's hot. And so one of the things that we wanted to do is be is, is really kind of capitalize on that, frankly, and really kind of um, give our community something a little different. And so um, we got we. Um, worked with a rental company and um, got a number of different inflatables, water uh, water events and water activities right there. Um, and in fact, thankfully to, to Justin and his team, we're actually gonna put a lot of those water activities um, in front of the, the fire station and um, use that space really as a great opportunity for, for kids and for families to, to enjoy that part. Um, the, um, the other thing I wanted to, to talk about is my goal, ultimately, when I'm walking into this, um, even from back in November, my experience with the festival is the, the Boone River Valley Festival, um, is to make Puffer Billy family friendly um, and every square foot of it be walkable and uh, be something that, that families would really want and, and be attracted to. And so my goal in that is to, um, I guess, one, one area that has been a place of contention is the um, is the beer tent. And so as a mom of four kids, for example, one thing that I didn't go into with, with our kids, it really wasn't a, an attractive space for, for young children. 
And so um, using the model of Iowa State Fair and other, um, and other festivals that have in, even in downtown areas is to allow open beverage um, containers um, throughout the festival and not have that contained you know, beer tent look. Um, and so um, this with, again, with the help of John and, and, and lots of, in fact, four levels of security around, uh, around alcohol consumption, um, but this would allow adults with their children or so to be able to enjoy a, a beverage, but then be able to walk in, and enjoy the car show or um, the spike driving contest or the bike tournament. Um, and um, and so from, for our sake, that would look like um, open beverage uh, availability from 6th Street up to 9th Street. So 6th Street, the reason why that's important is that's where the car show would start. And up to 9th, of course, is where the concert is that Saturday night. So this would allow folks to be able to really enjoy the entire festival and not be kind of beholden to a phase to, to consume, if that makes sense. Um, so those are some of the big notable changes and I'll take, anybody have any questions kind of where I'm at so far with? <clears throat> how do you how plan on controlling that? How, how do I control, control it? So with um, with those four levels of security. So first of all, at points of entry, I've got um, I've got volunteers at every point of entry. So that would look like barricades on eighth. I'm sorry, on six, seven, eighth, and ninth, essentially, um, with either security around the ninth ninth area because of the stage and such. But then um, regular volunteers on eighth, seventh, and sixth. Um, Excuse me. Sorry. Is this the map? Yes. Thank you. Um, and so that, what that looks like then is a, um, a as I said, volunteer the points of entry, checking IDs and wristbands, wristbanding those for 21 and over. Even if they don't, they tell me they don't want to drink, but certainly we don't think people consume, but we do want to have that wristband on them um, so that we can identify. Then um, they have to purchase tickets. Again, like your, um, like most festivals, you have to purchase tickets in order to purchase alcohol. And so at that point too, there's a there's volunteers who are checking for wristbands and IDs. Um, then of course, at where kind of the, the pink kind of cross there in the middle is kind of your, the combination of food trucks and, um, and ticket booths and such. Um, and that's, again, you've got levels, uh, you've got people who are checking IDs, making sure people are wristbanded um, before they can, um, can even purchase the tickets. Um, and then number three is you've got the folks who are at the beer. I, I call it a tent just for our, our sake, but it's the language I know is kind of confusing. But basically where people actually purchase their beer that? with the tent. Thank you very much. Um, and, then, um, and then the fourth level is paid police presence. So um, again, using the Iowa um, the State Fair kind of model, even the Wicked Festival um, at Art in the Park, we had beer consumption at Art in the Park with police presence. They would walk in and just patrol the area, making sure that nobody was consuming. Um, the only area that is outside of the, those, so I, and I apologize to take a step back now that we have the map in front of us. The the the, um, the rectangle there in the middle that is my barrier for. Um, for beer consumption. The only thing outside of that is that water park area. And it, it really, that was because I didn't want, as a team, we talked about having aluminum cans and things like that, you know, water park area, bus seem um, unsafe. So that area um, would, would not allow, um, but there would be signage. There's a parade route, Jennifer. So I, I apologize, the parade route is the blue, um, so it goes up story and actually crosses over on 7th. So um, as coming from Hancock, going up story as it usually has, it will cross over on 7th instead of 8th. And the reason is because that allows a lot of the stuff on 8th Street and the corner of 8th and story uh, to remain there. So from Friday night to Saturday, folks would know where, where to go for their food trucks, the entertainment, things like that would then be able to start right away. Um, also, this allows everyone to uh, disembark floats and such in the high school uh, parking lot as they usually have, uh, but just from the other side of the parking lot. Yes. Yeah. 
One other, I guess, notable change with this year is that the vendors um, and the craft fair vendors will actually now uh, will be over at McHose. So we, uh, the team did bring back Art in the Park for this year. And so that will be on Sunday. Um, it is to note that this setup is um, only applicable on Friday and Saturday. Uh, Sunday then becomes your uh, community worship service over at the high school, plus Art in the Park and the train swap show, which is at um, Fairgrounds. Um, and so that this whole setup goes away. So after the, after the, is there any vendors downtown after the parade? So there will not be vendors downtown, but we're really, what we're really doing here is putting a huge spotlight on our downtown stores. And so we're really at, um, setting the stage for them to shine. Um, as well as have lots of activities and lots of things for families and, and, and adults to do downtown. Um, but the, the shopping focus will really be on our downtown shops. Well, I think that that's great. But I think that brings a lot of people down there too, the vendors. And I, and I, thousands of people walking around down there after the parade. Mm -hmm. You know, the parade's over. They kind of, I mean, it's always been kind of tradition. They trend to go downtown, walk around. I, I'm not knocking your idea. I'm just wondering where are they going to go? Well, that, that's the, so we have over 24 events. Um, you know, or, I'll, I'll say about 20 events that are happening downtown. And um, with the, we've got a motorcycle show as well as the, a lot of the contests, a lot of the, um, we've actually got entertainment that will be starting around noon right after the, um, right after the parade. So they'll be, as well as like the kids activities, well, the, the focus on that water park will be on Saturday. Um, and so right after the parade, we'll have a lot of a lot of stuff that'll start at 11, if not noon, to drive that traffic downtown. I'm just asking. And no, 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 it's true. Because, and, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, you know, my conversation is even with the store owners themselves. Like, we, I wanted to set a stage for you, but I want you to show up on that stage. And so um, I really, I, I want to put a big spotlight on that, on our downtown and really drive a lot of traffic. Oh, I think, yeah. My own personal edification. Where, when, and where is the race, the five k? <laughs> um, so actually, the five k route at this point hasn't exactly. haven't changed. Um, and so well, yeah, there's been a couple of different places that started at. Oh, that's a great, that's a great point. <laughs> Even back when I guess. Yes. So um, last year. So um, my understanding is about between Boone Vision and um, and the bakery is so where Saturday is. morning or. Yes. Okay. My own. Yes. Any questions or thoughts, concerns? Okay. I mean, really, this is this is change. I mean, and yes, so there's more about Upper Billy that's staying the same, that's that's changing. But my goal is that the tweaks are 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 notable and that they really breathe some new life into the festival. Um, I believe that having such a big band, I mean, we're talking the first multi-platinum selling band that Puffer's seen in at least 15 years, not longer. And so we believe that we can get a lot of, not only our own folks to come out and really really support Pumper Billy, um, we can really be a regional draw. Um, and that's, that's my opening thing. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any questions, even about, even about the chamber? So I know that I've kind of not really given a whole lot of detail. I don't know, um, we've, we've really had, um, really hit the ground running in my position. It's been, um, as I said, it's a lot to learn, it's a lot to do, um, but I, you know, it's serving 225 members, um, advocating for them, supporting them, um, really working in this region um, to, to create partnerships, if not strengthen partnerships, where maybe some of those partnerships needed some, some extra work. Um, but I, that's my that's my real goal is to build on the relationships that I've been able to establish in Boone, um, and let alone in Boone County um, for the past twelve, if not fourteen years, um, and and really turn around and and use that to to build our economy up and build our build our community. Up. Just one thing for uh, where she wants the alcohol. Obviously, you don't need to vote on that tonight, but that map would be part, correct me if I'm wrong, Justin, would be part of the alcohol license that they apply for at some point? Yeah, that has to be, so when, that'll have to be submitted, uploaded to Iowa ABD as part of the documents for the Iowa alcohol. So keep in mind, as you're planning your uh, 
festival the the approval comes whether you're allowed to do that when the license is submitted and it comes before council and it, so i'd encourage council if they have any questions about that tonight that we can an get answered or anything and i know jim may have a well i think the security part of it needs to be approved by police and fire both i think that would be something we seriously need to to look at whether it come from a liability standpoint uh, and how good that security that they propose really is. So, so I think the license would require these gentlemen to sign on as well as council. And then you're familiar with the decor amendment, right? Make sure that doesn't slip through. You're aware of that. Perfect. Okay. And, and to your point, I, I I've certainly spoke again. These are these are changes. I realize that these are are um, they're they're big changes, and and at least in terms of process. And so I have I, I've talked to many of uh, I've talked to John and Justin and, and and Bill. And so again, if there's hoops I need to jump through, um, you know, let me know because again, the, the that's the goal is to really again make this whole thing family friendly and actually decrease the amount of incidences. Um, from overconsumption, and so from you know my research, that actually is what what happens is because folks can actually you know be around their families, they can um, they can enjoy and walk throughout the entire festival. They're not just not sitting and drinking. Question: Do other um, cities do this where they don't confine to a beer tent? They just allow to move right. around. And I think that's that's kind of the neat thing now is that we have a lot of communities that have have done this and have done it well. Okay. So you think even just downtown Des Moines where you have like a beer festival, you know, or you know, beer wine festival, where that is the point is to move drink. around. Um, and yet though it's all downtown. You know, it's all you know multiple, multiple blocks of downtown, let alone farmers markets and uh, um, and, and festivals. Uh, even the Dayton Rodeo, you know, has downtown um, a downtown uh, concert um, that that really kind of you know, again, minus the kids' activities and things like that, but you know, mirrors a lot of the you know, a lot of the aesthetics that we're looking for. Um, and so, I it's it's a change for us, it's a change for Boone, um, but I, it's it's not insurmountable. Um, and with that too, I would certainly want, and I would, um, I, I want certainly the, the city of Boone to to. Uh, to see value in the work of Pepperbilly as being the town festival. And so as a as a longtime sponsor of the festival, we thank you and appreciate your your support. And um, you know, I would ask that you continue to support the festival, um, financially speaking, if not um, as a even as the title sponsor um, on a regular basis, we could um, there's parts of it that you'd like to to align your brand with, we would certainly like to help you with that. So what are you expecting from the city in in-kind services? In in-kind services, I would, I, I, I guess I'm not aware of-, of the, Like picnic tables and that type of stuff that they haul down there every year. Mm -hmm. um, right, so I would have, that would be a lot of good questions about what, um, what kind of services. And again, this, this is my, First time with Pupper, and so I would have to. I would love to know, you know, what the city, in terms of, you know, I want to be able to kind of put a, a, that value and what what some of those services are that that I that I need to make sure gets gets done because those are the a, kind of a city responsibility. Um, whereas, like you know, with the festival work, sometimes I had, you know, John Reynolds with or you know, I'm sorry, uh, Russo with with the landfill going to get stuff, you know. So I I would love. You know, help me understand what, um, and this one is certainly we could have um, a longer conversation, but I would love to know what it is I need to make sure that, that I Thank line you. up beforehand. Bill and Wayland could probably answer those questions for you. Okay. The only concern I have is security in and out because your volunteers carry no authority. Sure, sure, and I understand that. And so the good news is, is that um, I do have a so number one, I do have a good inside a, a good quantity of volunteers that are going to be there. I actually have a great partnership moving forward, even from back in twenty one when I worked with Habitat for Humanity. So it, they again are going to be working alongside um, this festival, 
um, in, alongside me in down with this festival. And so uh, at the end of the day, though, it's the paid police presence that are, I mean, I've got, you know, one to two officers each night. So from the point we start serving to the point that we stop serving, um, we want to make sure that we have um, authorities that we can, we can call on if we need to. Okay. I can sit down. Anyway, um, I think, let's see. I, I, and I, I, yeah, I guess, though, I don't know what your thoughts are on the, the sponsorship conversation. If, if you want me to submit something, uh, uh, an official ask. So in 2022, council approved $5,000 for the chamber for the festival in 2022. Uh, the chamber never sent an invoice, so that money was not sent. Uh, it is available uh, to forward to them for if council so chooses for the 2022. I don't know if you were planning on making a request for 2023. Now would be the time to do it. Um, so if council has any questions about that or uh, if you want me to forward, I certainly can forward that check. I have it. It's in the budget. Uh, so I can certainly forward that. But as you know, we pay off invoices and we, we never did get an invoice from that. I've received one now and, and I've uh, got it approved. So I have the check. I can certainly send that for 2022. Um, can you tell us um, where you stood at the end of 2022 for finances on the festival? So overall, we were in the black. And so um, with the city of support, we were able to um, be in the black, although yeah, and my email to you um, essentially break even. So we were um, above a little bit less. I mean, it was about, I'm sorry, a little bit more than two thousand dollars that we were we were ahead. Um, and yet, the no, that doesn't um, that that doesn't take in consideration staff time. So I think that um, our goal, and I'll say my goal, is to right size the the, the puffer belly weekend and uh, to be good stewards of the finances. Not again, not to say that the team wasn't beforehand, um, but, and I will say too, one of the big things about last year is we had to make some big purchases last year that will serve us for years to come, but they were expenses in, in 22. So um, not all of it was just, um, you know, was just money out the window. So <laughs> how much did you increase your budget this year, Jennifer, by hiring that band? So actually, we 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 did increase on the music side, but we decreased in other ways. So um, they, the good news is is that I think, and I'll say this too, for revenue's sake, um, while the concert, for example, is is essentially free, we are selling VIP passes and tickets and things for that. Um, so we'll be able to recoup a lot of those costs. Okay. So the invoice for the five thousand, what? Are we sponsoring a certain event or something? Was that so? Back in twenty two, if I'm not mistaken, we we put the the city's name on the kids. Um, yeah, at that five. If I remember, in twenty two, that was for the carnival, right? Right. The, the inflatables. No. Sorry? Oh. Well, right. It, well, no, it was for the carnival, but that never materialized. Yeah, and there, to tell the elected like official, there is nothing in the minutes that says we're specifically for. Uh, just that they gave five thousand dollars in support of Puff Valley Days. Yeah. Well, um, and it was approved. Okay. But we didn't pay that, so that's still earmarked. We have that for this current. I can cert yes, I can release that check now that I've received an invoice. And so for this, what are you proposing that we respond so to? I, I mean, I would love to see that the city um, support it, even at a ten thousand dollar level, which I believe it has been done before. Um, that would make the, the city a title sponsor over the entire festival and really be able to promote um, promote the city of Boone throughout from start to finish, if not with all of the promotion beforehand um, and, and certainly what, as well as after. Um, you know, that being said, we certainly have a lot of great events that are at the at, uh, at $5,000 level that will certainly give a lot of awareness. Well, we got, I mean, I'd support 10. I think five again, personally. Uh, uh, if we did 10, where would we have the other five come from? 
Is that even possible? You mean 10 on top of the five or? No. Five covers last year in terms of the. the so that's done, the five. We're giving them that. So now we're talking about this year. So we are going to pay that in. Okay. okay. Yeah, we just said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I'll release her. Yes. They're going to get their 5,000 that they didn't wow. send us an invoice on. Yes. Okay. Okay. So they end up with 10. Yeah. So that if we give them another five. Okay. 10 grand. I, um, okay. So with our. Last year's support of five thousand, um, and proposal of five thousand. Now, where would that come from? So the five thousand for twenty two came out of this year's economic development budget line item. Okay. Um, I would need to check if 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 I have money for that in this budget year. If not, then it would be uh, delayed until this until fiscal year twenty four, July first. Um, but I can look at those and see. I, I just can't give you a hundred percent answer because uh, I'll have to look at the line item. Can, can we wait until you pin this down before we take action on it? Can we wait until the next meeting? Yeah. I mean, I want to know that the money's there, you know, before yeah. we commit it. Yeah. Sure. Council's decision. There's just so much going on in Eden right now. Yeah. I can bring that back at the uh, I mean, April 17th council meeting. Yeah. I, I would like to. In the meantime, I'll release the $5,000 check for yeah, that. Yeah. Do we need, uh, that's already been approved, so we don't need to look on that. Yes, sir. Okay. So, I, I mean, I want to at least do the 5,000. I just need to know where it's coming from first. That's reasonable? For, for Festival 23, I can tell you, yeah, I'll look at it, and I can bring it back at the April 17th council meeting. Sounds good. If, if council is acceptable to that. Um, another request I would have uh, is for for next year and beyond, be really great to have that in for the hotel motel discussion, honestly, because that's you know the same. That's what it's for. It's for promotion and stuff like that. With all due respect to that, we have gotten burned several times in the past, and with the, you're new, so yeah, yeah not I'm anymore. not blaming you at all. You have never been a fan of chamber up until this point, so. What I'm saying is accountability for that money. Sure. I, I asked for that. I've been asking for that for four years and have yet to receive it. So that's the only thing I would ask because we take a beating all the time on, on the use of taxpayer money. So I want to make sure that we're using taxpayer money the right way. So that, that's all I ask. It's just accountability, a little transparency coming from the from the chamber. Which, like I said, we were never privy to in the past. So, and, and I will say this, and again, I'm, I'm slow rolling this. It's not something that you know I, I can do very fast. And again, you know, it, but I do believe it, it, it's a necessary change, especially as a small, as a one person shop at the chamber. Um, I, you know, my job is to be a good chamber and um, serve my, my serve my members. And certainly, community events um, are a part of that. And I and I, I love being an event planner. I actually love being a, a festival planner. Um, but it is difficult um, to do, you know, three day festival with then on top of you know, serving my members. So what I, one of the things we are looking at doing is is creating. And again, too, I think this is where it started out as a. As a as a financial and as a fundraising op opportunity here to really kind of run the the, the fundraising app to the public and really get that public buy-in, but to create a 501c3 around Pufferbilly. So to create Friends of Pufferbilly where you have a board, you have it's a, Easy to fundraise that it way. is an yep. opportunity for, um, for for Terry to donate to Puffer as a as, a, as an individual and then receive that, that tax break. Um, and to support his his community funder uh, community festival, um, but also Terry can see the finances, black and white. I mean that the in terms of the picking on me because he was about for donation. Yeah, she is. She's talking about your donation. Well, I am, and I, I think that that's going to be an important aspect too. From even from a managerial standpoint, you've got a board of directors around it. You've got people, you know, the bylaws that say, you know, they, you know. They have things that they have to do um, you know, on that board. And I think that it's going to be a great opportunity to really, again, put it in the hands of the community because you're right, right? So that the chambers, 
can make decisions. I <clears throat> people have thoughts on what the changes I'm making. And at the end of the day, this allows the, the community to really have buy-in and, and to really support. Well, the good thing about this is you have to deal with the aftermath of all the changes. Mm -hmm. Well, right, and that's a lot of it's a lot of right. responsibility. It's a lot of liability for for one organization, let alone one person. Right. And so, with having the um, a you know a, a nonprofit and really being able to as a community come together and make these major decisions, um, you know, and have those members even of that board, you know, you know, there's the bylaws that say you know you can only serve on the board for for three years or four years, you know, whatever the the you know. But at the end of the day, it, it allows that new blood to come in and really do. Well, recover as a, as a, a town of Boone. Well, I agree with you, Eli. Uh, you can tell us where that money's coming from. That would be a good thing. I absolutely will. That, and uh, like I said, with the, the hotel motel thing, that'll be easier to have this conversation. We can see everything in writing in the application and stuff for future years. And then that money's specifically there, too. It takes a little bit of more pre-planning, but I think it would be easier to do. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, that's what we I, can again, when I did the festival. That's what I, that's yeah. how I you know, have yeah, you did that for yeah. so, um, so anyway, no, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Same thing. thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, fiscal year 2022 audit, Kevin Houston. Good evening. Good evening. I'll let conversation lead right into my conversation dealing with finances and, and the audit, which we just recently finished up. Uh, Andrea felt like it drug on a long time, and it seemed to. There's a reason for that. Uh, every year, when we audit, we follow generally accepted government auditing standards. Nationwide, that's been done. In the state of Iowa, there's a lot of compliance audit. And that's been expanded upon. And so we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 extra compliance things that we have to look at. Some of those are quite extensive. And there were some new ones this year, so it took a little bit longer for us to complete the audit. And those compliance issues, everything came up fine. There was no, we didn't run across any compliance issues whatsoever. And that's the main thing the state is interested in. Uh, they want to make sure that cities, counties, um, school districts are, are in compliance with federal laws, state laws, everything else. So um, as an example, you know, they want to make sure all the reports are filed on time, the HIP reports and things like that. So we look at those reports and we look at when they're submitted and when they're accepted. And, that's just part of it, and it, it takes some time to do that. Um, we also look at the financials extensively. We look at internal controls. Um, one of the things that is very positive in our view, the city is changing software. We think that's gonna, it's gonna be a lot of work. There's nothing easy to that anytime you change something like that, um, but we're really excited to see that because we think that's also gonna assist with some of these compliance things too. So it's a real positive in our view that doing that. We've talked to uh, Andre pointed me in the direction of some of the other cities that use this and, and they're thrilled with this particular software. So we think that's really uh, positive. It's gonna, you've already started it, is that right? Yep, building has already um, gone live. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I mean, yeah, the utility billings, the accounting, payroll, everything's gonna be wrapped into this. And we think that will fix some some small issues the city has uh, along the way. And, and uh, so we're real, real excited about that. So otherwise, the, the audit itself, everything went well. It just took us a little bit longer this year because of this additional work that the state required. Sounds I don't really have a lot. Anybody have any questions for me? Sounds like but so. yeah, actually, I do. Uh, on the audit, they found uh, Kevin mentioned utility billing, uh, three things. Uh, some customers weren't charged sales tax on sewer revenue, which is one that's been fixed. I asked staff to do a total audit of all commercial accounts on sewer accounts. Uh, there were 44 uh, that weren't, those have been fixed. Some of the reasons we're finding on that is the software, what Kevin mentioned. Uh, I had Leslie get in there and actually do an account to see what happens when that was in. And there were some of the things that I think were set up initially, but weren't working now where they weren't automatically checking those things like the tax. So it wasn't being done. All 388 has been audited. So we're good there. Same thing on the stormwater. If you remember back in uh, April of 22, 
uh, I asked uh, staff to do an audit on stormwater because I was uncomfortable with the revenue that was coming in, whether it was matching. Uh, of all of those, there were 99 accounts that were um, found. Those have all been fixed. I think what, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what they found was some dates they put in before we actually did that audit. So rest assured that the stormwater has already been fixed. The other one was a small uh, thing that was misclassified in 2007 that's been fixed and we've taken those precautions to make sure it doesn't happen again. And I'll end on uh, the supervisor for the utility building will do an audit of each change now of uh, every time it, it changes or we have a new one she will personally do an audit on it to make sure it's set up right. So everything has been fixed. I just wanted to share that with council. Good. Yeah, and that's, and that's good. And, and the way we come about that is we select like every year, we select a certain number of customers and included in that customers is city employees. Not all, we, we randomly select city employees, council members, and, and we test those. Um, and then we found, we found some instances like Bill mentioned. And so then we expand our testing. And so we test more and we continue to find some more, nothing dramatic or anything like that. We're just the numbers uh, involved this year is why we put the comment in there and it's it's been fixed and taken care of. And, and again, I think the software is gonna help tremendously with that. As well. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, any questions for Kevin? Thank you very much. Kevin. Okay, next up, City of Boone housing study, Brenda. Good evening. Good evening. I alluded uh, to uh, the fact that we wanted to come back and discuss a uh, housing study and the need for a housing study and how we could potentially move forward with that initiative. I would note I'm joined tonight by the current board chair of the Boone Growth Organization, Ashley Redeker, and past chair, Nate Neerum. Um, I'll talk to you here in a bit about kind of where that group is standing in terms of willing to support uh, the city of Boone and their, their efforts to do, to do a housing study. I sent uh, really a scope of work to Bill uh, to share with you all so we wouldn't have to get too into to the details this evening. But what I am recommending to you is that we uh, co contract with the Mid-Iowa Planning Alliance. Uh, Boone was one of the early members of that group and uh, it's a regional group of, and they have staff of planners, including a housing planner. And they would uh, look at the census data. They would look at the census projections. They would look at all of the past housing data uh, on the community. They will conduct a survey uh, where citizens will be encouraged to provide feedback and kind of that provides the narrative and the things that kind of come through in terms of what what people are saying about housing in the community of Boone and uh, this process will take, um, you know, three or four months, and that's a pretty quick process. Uh, but I think it's real important instead of us trying to guess uh, what we should be trying to do in terms of housing in your community. Uh, getting a study that will actually look into the short-term needs of the community and longer-term needs. Uh, they'll, they'll consult our offices regarding uh, what's going on on the economic development front, what's planned for expansions, who are we talking to uh, for prospects, what's new initiatives in the community, and really put together uh, an executive report that works out really great to distribute to the public and then there'll be a more detailed report that'll be made available to the council, to the economic development growth board, um, just so we can put good plans together. That'll actually be also the tool we use to, to take to developers. So uh, as folks are coming into the community and saying, what sort of housing do you need? Or we've got a great tract of land and, and how do we best assist them in making the decision to invest here? Uh, so one of the things I like about the survey is it'll actually say for houses between three and 400,000, how many do they think will need on a short-term basis? How many a long-term basis? Um, how do we handle some of our most challenging housing needs? Those things where folks need to be at 30% of their income and how do we best put together a strategy to support that kind of lower end housing? Um, it's called a comprehensive housing study for a reason. And so, um, 
The Boone Growth Board has acted and approved a $4,000 uh, support for the community of Boone uh, to do the survey. I'm asking the, the council tonight to act on 8,000 and we have a request in for Alliant Energy for 4,000. And so between those three contributions, we would have enough to kick off the study and get moving on that. Um, and again, my hope would be is by the end of summer that we'd be able to bring the results back to you, uh, share them with the board. We may even do a joint, a joint meeting with the planner uh, to try to understand that. And I think I alluded to two weeks ago, um, Ogden has just went through this process and um, it was actually a, a developer over there that nudged us to go that direction. And uh, again, instead of guessing, it's it's great. We know they have a need of 122 housing units. We've got a number now we can focus on. And I think the same will hold true here with the council and good information to help you track what's going on. I, but Bill, once a month, what's happening on housing? How many housing permits? So has the city done something like this previously? Bill, can you answer that? I could not find it. Definitely not since I've been sitting in the seat and, and thinking back, Mayor, I, no. I don't think it's been done. So it, it sounds like it's really would be helpful information for us and yeah. kind of development. If we, and if we ever if we plan on moving forward, we have to have something like this. Yeah, it's agreed. What the need is and like what to target that. Yeah, if the four thousand from Alliant doesn't go through, what's the? Um, well, I'll negotiate with the planner. Our offices will come in, and what I have volunteered to do is if there's even some things I need to do to help with put boots on the ground. Uh, um, I'm glad to do that if we if we come up a little short on the alliance side. Well, but since they'll be the last money in, they'll feel an obligation that right top it up. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, I think they've not necessarily been supported the community before with the housing study. I think they know too. They're got a vested interest in every yeah. new home that goes up in the Probably. community. They flip a meter on it. I, I'd like Ashley and Nate. Anything which of you'd like to. I mean, it passed unanimously through the Boone Grove Board. I think they know, I mean, I know they know how important it is in order to balance out and, and really aggressively uh, pursue development. We need to know what we do need. And what's the timeline? When will the data be? Um, it will be by the end of summer, Linda, that we can have something available in terms of a final report. So that's really um, that's a really quick turnaround. It, it is a quick Great. turnaround, and uh, this is a really a newer service. They kind of cut their teeth on the project over in Ogden, and uh, I just as things have come on, I thought this is a really important thing in terms of us. Again, I mean, whether it be a tax credit project, whether it be a a market-based rental project or whether it be uh, where, where does the next um, higher end subdivision go? How do we tackle all of the different pieces of, I think it's going to come back and it's going to say we need a little bit of everything, but it'd be good to be able to see that in black and white and in terms of, of how it breaks down in terms of what are really the community's needs are. Do you need, a, would you, can you find that money, Bill? That's yeah. the next question. Yeah, I have found it. Okay. Uh, that's the reason I couldn't answer the other question because of this 8,000 for the housing assessment. And I will just note that uh, MIPA, who's doing this, is this, the same planner did the review of our zoning ordinance that I haven't had time to bring forward to you yet, but there is no charge for that, just FYI. And they also wrote your wastewater uh, grant that was successful. The right. There are, I mean, we have needed this in our region for a very long time, and so great to have that service now that to be able to offer this. Anything from Ashley or Nate? I hate to do all the talking. Because. I was just going to say it's it's nice to have a plan or a map and this gives us that and that's why I think our board is so forward. I guess I don't want to speak for Ashley but it would be getting passed unanimously for ours and, and I, I know that we're a county county group but we, we support all of our city dog and, and this is something that Probably for a long time. And we also did our economic growth did contribute to Ogden's uh, housing study as well. So, so they thank you too because that initiated that support too. With thank you having to talk about this one. So, oh, sounds good. Yes. Yeah. I move that we uh, allocate the eight thousand dollars needed for the housing study. I second it. Yep. Call the roll. 
Norman? Yes. Elsebeck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Sainz? Yes. We're going to get this rolling. All right. Thank you. Hey, Brenda? Yes. What's the status of the home improvement? I was, I was actually going to pop back in, but um, so we have, I think, six applications so far okay. and quite a few phone calls. So um, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I think there will have to be some selection by your committee. Uh, we'll have a scoring matrix. And <laughs> so it's good that, it'll, that it's popular because I think then we can go back in and, and be able to initiate that. But you'll, uh, those are due May 1st. And uh, so cool. we'll. We'll convene at your group to score those Perfect some point time after it. So keep promoting it. I mean, we want yeah. good applications to pick from. And I haven't looked specifically at how much they're requesting, but Perfect. the word's getting out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, F, public hearing for the consideration of adopting the fiscal year 2024 budget. Are there any written comments? Yeah. Any public comments? Not this public hearing is closed. Um, so, so th yeah. 3097 resolution adopting the 2024 20, budget. So approve. Second. Call the roll. Beth? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Signs? Yes. Norman? Yes. Okay. Uh, report of standing committees. We have nothing under policy administration. Uh, public safety and transportation, David. Yes, Your Honor. So we had our meeting and uh, there was a discussion about a uh, stop sign. I think, Chief, would you like to? Yes. So um, as we were talking about um, the new school going out on Hancock Drive, um, we also I also started thinking about some safety around the other schools that we have um, remaining. And one of the, um, we have a portable stop sign that rolls out at uh, Mamie, or excuse me, first in Delaware, uh, right as the entrance of the middle school. Um, and what I'd like to do is, my suggestion was to make that a permanent four-way stop. Um, and the reason for that is just consistency. I noticed that sometimes in the evening hours, if there's a um, event going on, a, a choir thing or a, a sports event or whatever, when people are leaving there, they're expecting that four-way stop to be there, and it's not anymore because it's pulled out when school's out, and we've had some near misses there. Um, we also get some complaints of speeding on First Street, and I think having that stuff, permanent four-way stop there would certainly slow that traffic down and, and cause them to um, stop there and just kind of help control the traffic through there. So that was my um, suggestion. We talked about it, public safety, and, and we're in favor of this. We wanted to bring it the council so everybody knew what was going on. Like a good idea to me. Sounds good. Motion. Motion to approve. Yes. Thank you. For a second. I'll second that. Call the roll. Williamson? Yes. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Stein? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Hillsback? Yep. Yes. That's all I have, right? <laughs> hey, next up, utility committee, Terry. Uh, there are two resolutions listed on there, and I'll let City Administrator Scare, give you the details. Thank you. Uh, so in uh, Wayland, in looking at uh, what we were charging for the meters, we found that we were behind the times and actually, I think, losing some money on them. He brought a new schedule uh, to utility. Um, utility uh, requested that the cost plus 20%. That's what I believe is on here. Is that correct, Wayland? So this is, as you know, our fees are brought by resolution. So we would need approval of this resolution to start charging these fees so we're no longer losing money. Uh, particularly, we have um, the 22nd and limb project coming, which is going to use a lot of meters, I'm assuming. So it's important that we get this, plus the senior project. Do you have anything to add, Waylon? I just, if you have like $50,000 meters at 22nd and limb, well, I didn't want to be losing Towards that, and the 20 percent. Just so everybody's clear on this, twenty percent above our cost covers all the incidental pieces of brass that go with the meter. We're not trying to make any money on this. This is stuff that our ordinance says we supply with a meter. We give the fittings as a part of it. That twenty percent covers those things. Thanks for finding that. Okay. So moved. Second. Call the roll. 
Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Sines? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Hulsevent? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Barry? You want me to take the second one? Oh. Yeah, you can take the second one too. Okay, so as you know, we've been doing the INI uh, program uh, here in the city of Boone. Uh, this year we're doing phase four, which is downtown. So it's time to move on to the next one. This agreement with uh, WHKS was brought to utility for review and approval. Up on the map there shows you the next uh, area where we'll be doing the INI program. Uh, they actually will be started doing some of the tasks this spring with flow meters, well, right? Flow meters are in to pick up the current spring rain. Okay. And um, okay, so the, the agreement is in there. It's budgeted for, and uh, we would need approval of the agreement with WHKS for them to perform phase five of the INI program in fiscal year 24. If you remember a meeting that we had and there was some discussion by some of the citizens about water backup and stuff, this area should alleviate that, right? It's, we kind of targeted that. It, it's, it's gonna, yes. It'll it help. Alleviate some, of it. Or some, of, it, some of the area was split on the way the water system or sewer system flows. Yeah. Um, Hopefully next year we can encompass everything or all yeah. all the, so that the primary the primary area alleviates some of that for us. And the, the agreement is the amount of ninety six thousand seven hundred and forty one dollars. I would move to approve. Second. Call the roll. Bird. Yes. Heinz. Yes. Norman. Yes. Hilsebeck. Yes. Nathan. Yes. Engstrom. Yes. Next up, economic development, Terry. Just a couple of things. We uh, met with Kating Group, Inc. DDC, Bill and I met with the Kating uh, Group. They're the developers that are looking at Park and Marion uh, that out there. Uh, we've discussed some timelines, some broad guidelines. If council chooses to approve, they are looking at about 100 to 120 units, different shapes and sizes. Um, that'll be determined once we get past that point. The site will uh, start, will break ground probably in November or December. We have that land rented out right now for agricultural purposes. Uh, in November, December, they said a 12 to 18 month timeline with apartments coming on probably after the eighth or ninth month will start to come on. Um, so that's pretty exciting, 120 units. So. Um, nothing new to share about the UV project other than they're very close to being done. I got a status report today. Asked for one. Well, the bad part about it was they didn't think they were going to make their timeline in April. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, Fox sent me and said they're not going to make the timeline that they said. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I did see that late this afternoon. Right. Yeah. So... We'll see what happens. Um, they never spent one day on that site in December. So just so you know. Um, we went, uh, uh, Councilman Bird and I went to Ag Certain Day and uh, did a presentation out there with Representative Feenstra. There's some exciting stuff going on out there. If we can make that happen along with the city and, and the state and Iowa State as a collaboration. Um, it could be huge for Boone and uh, the city. So I'll keep you updated as much as we can. And I went by Pritchard Brothers today and they had started their VDF renovation project. And that, so that's all I have here. Thank you. Okay, next up, department reports, building official Dave Aids. Uh, finance officer, Andrea. Just have a quick note. Most of you have probably received your tax assessment notices in the mail. Um, I just want to point out that that is for the tax levy that we will be working on next budget season. This budget season, we only saw a 0.48% increase in our taxable values. Um, so I just didn't want that to get confusing that those dollar amounts that you're seeing everybody talk about are not what we made our tax levy on this year for next year. Dollars. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. City Attorney Jim. No report, Your Honor. Uh, Public Works, Waylon. Yeah, real quick. Um, before you guys on the desk, as we're uh, approaching the end of our snow season, hopefully we're there. Um, it was. Give you guys some statistics on where we were. I, I won't 
bore you with reading all of them. If anybody has any questions at these, uh, please feel free to ask. I would like to also add that's not on your sheet. Uh, City Public Works crews did log 888 regular hours just for the first snow removal. That doesn't count going back, cleaning corners or anything. It's also 888 hours straight. Hmm. So this year feels like a normal year to you guys, but I, statistics show here it, it's not. Um, we had 15 events. Uh, the 660 tons of salt, I think last year I probably was somewhere around 200, 220 tons. So we're three times up from that. That's all kind of really adding up in some of the figures. So just wanted to let you know what our crews were up to. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 41 inches. Wait a minute. Are you sure? That's one got. Uh, I didn't think it was a bad winter. Yeah. Living in Minnesota. So if you remember uh, at the last meeting, you approved the bids on the West Park and South Marion uh, concrete construction project. So now it's time to, to approve the contract. In the packet is a contract from DOT. If you remember, the bid price for that project was $1,285,239. Uh, the resolution is in the in packet here, as well as a letter from SEH, who is our engineering consultant on the project, uh, recommending that we approve the contract with WIC Construction uh, to complete that project. I'll answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, I need a motion to approve the contract. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Stein. Yes. Foreman. Yes. 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 Engstrom. Yes. Yes. Okay. Next up, public safety, Chief Adams. Uh, we're just awaiting uh, fire station bids are due Thursday, this Thursday, and we'll know more after that. Huh? Otherwise, I have nothing here. Thank you, Chief Weevil. No report, Your Honor. Uh, City Administrator Bill. Thank you, sir. Uh, as the elected officials are aware, uh, B.J. McGinn resigned his council seat for second ward. That was effective or excuse me, March 31st of this year. So now here we're tonight to discuss how the elected officials want to proceed. Um, there's two options. Uh, one is appoint a citizen from Ward 2 to the open seat. The term expires at the end of this year. So whoever you appoint will still need, if they want to retain the seat, will still need to run for election in the fall. Um, I suggest what you can do if you decide this option is to accept letter, a letter of interest and a resume from applicants uh, until April 26, 2022 at noon. At that time, that afternoon, the, the uh, applicant information will be made available to the elected officials with the idea of bringing it forward on the May 1st council meeting uh, to discuss the uh, Resumes received and the letters received and make an appointment. The uh, notice, so we're required to put a notice in the paper. That will be in the paper on April 13th. That will get us within the timelines of the 420 days, according to Iowa law. Uh, the appointment must be made within 60 days of the vacancy on an appointment. And as you know, even if you choose this, uh, citizens can still present a petition for a special election. Now, just a reminder, this is just for Ward 2. It's not the whole city like the, the last one was. <clears throat> the other election is you could vote tonight to hold a special election. Uh, I will tell you that the last special election that we just completed cost the city $3,700. The last Ward uh, special election we had, which was a few years ago, was around, I think, $1,300 total from the, the bill from the auditor. Um, if council decides tonight to hold a special election, then staff will begin working on the details as we did on the last special election. Uh, the special election must be held no later than 90 days from when the vacancy occurred. The vacancy occurred on April 1st of this year. Uh, due to the uh, closeness to November when the other election is, the cost of the elections and what we just paid for the other special election, uh, my recommendation to council would be to appoint somebody because it's not gonna be that much time before the election. But of course, even if you did that, as you know, a special election could happen if, if, if there's a petition. That is all I have. I'm, I'll leave it to the elected officials to have their discussion. How fast will we seat someone on a, an appointment versus 
special election? Well, we have 90, not more than 90 days on a special election. So that would take us probably the end of June for the special election by the time the auditors got everything and the staff did what they needed to do. Um, so you're looking at that person on a special election being seated in July, as opposed to if elected officials decide to make an appointment, that position uh, could be seated May 15th after your discussion on, on May 1st. Okay. So go through the appointment again. Applicants, we would um, make that public that there's an opening and they could fill out an application, submit it. And then we would review those. An application, a letter of interest and a resume. Okay. Then the council will review them. And at some point, someone will make a motion. They, so may, just, they may select a, piss, a specific person. Right. Another councilman may want a different person. So we discuss. We'll vote on it. And, yeah. And it's just citizens from Ward 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones that can put their resume in. Right. Well, um, that. Hate to say it, but I think we still need to do a special election because I know of at least two people that are interested in it. And I think that the people of Ward 2 may, need to make the decision. That's just how I, I think. I agree. I agree with that, but let them petition for it. Then. Yeah, I think you appoint. And then if they have so many days to turn in a petition. Well, we wouldn't be in this situation if, I mean, if Councilman McGinn would have resigned. Earlier on, we could have just done it all in one shot. But if we have someone interested in Ward 2, they also can... Determination, though, I don't think we could have got him on that special election. No. But see, if anyone's interested, they can, they can mm -hmm. turn in. And if they're dissatisfied with the outcome, they can petition for a special election anyway. It's a lot of work to be out and do it two times in one year. <laughs> I'm not, I like it's, you know, you, you know, the amount of time that we, that you put into it um, and the amount of money you put into it as well. Um, I, I would just recommend just appointing somebody just to, as well. If the council gets to vote on it, I mean, gets to decide. Yeah, we would decide and then it's absolutely what I don't want to do. I don't want to make that decision for the citizens war too. I guess for how many months? At the core of my being, I do not want to do that if they have the opportunity to do that themselves. So if we appointed someone, they would sit on the seat for six months and yeah. since election, they'd sit on it only four months and right. rerun again. If they want to keep, keep, keep the seat. Start running four months. Yeah, that's right. So right. Tom, you have a comment? I think that the council as a whole should bite the bullet and do your job, make your selection by the reference letters you receive, pick the council and put the, complete that term. And in November, that same person runs again and someone else can run against him if he wants to. The two people that you know that want to run can submit their letter of resume to the council and you guys need to realize that that's what you have to do at this time for a two-month term mm -hmm. pick the guy and put him on or woman whatever you have is made mm -hmm. but to keep passing it off saying you, you have to have a vote for a two-month term mm -hmm. uh, is just utterly ridiculous Linda? Well, I'd like the council to remember that is this taxpayer money? Sure. Yeah. So we don't really have a say. We elect you to do a job and to spend the money wisely. So uh, if I recall, it took almost two months. Am I correct in that to get Mr. Angstrom on the ballot or to even get the vote going? So we're running into. If, even if he got appointed in July, he's going to be, the, this gentleman or woman is going to be having to run again immediately. Sure. And I don't even know if that's fair to them because they haven't even been given the opportunity to, to really settle in, to even really know how to run again. I mean, I don't, I get the good feeling of wanting the community to make a decision, but you were elected to do a job, do your job. 
these and I say them because you you pay pride on saving taxpayer money and that's not saving taxpayer money that is costing us money so that you know this isn't a popularity contest this is a duty that you asked to serve and fill that seat as quickly as you can and getting mad at BJ and Ben for bettering his life and it just happens to be in Ames it's kind of unprofessional in my opinion but well, I don't know why he resigned nobody told me so well, you can ask him. You can ask him. You move. Dang. You can sit next to him. You can ask him. But he came out at a public meeting. Like I didn't call anybody out. I just said that if we would have done it before, we could have had one special election. Okay. We'd have been done with. Well, but I, he, I don't think he. I he think, was going to move. I think the council needs to reconsider that their role up here is like money, and it's tight. Things are tight right now all over, and that your job is to you know to appoint somebody in that seat for six months is not a problem. In my eyes. I mean, the people are going to petition it anyway if they want it. That's what I'm saying. That's the reality of it. If they want it, we don't know that. Probably do. You're making work for it. Yeah. Let the taxpayers decide if they want to spend the money. See what you got. Right. If they want it, they can step up and run for it and work yeah. for it instead of free. Yes. Just a quick question here. Um, I, I heard you, Mr. Chair, highlight, um, you know, make sure you got in there how much of a special life it costs. And I'm not, I know, I'm not going to work you. So I'm not advocating that I'm talking to people that they want to do it and file me the petition. But why is it that get highlighted and we can without any hesitation go out eight thousand dollars for a, a housing housing uh, study center? study? No, no question asked. Everyone will have to miss that. I watched this woman but no, we did a heck of a presentation and questions, 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 questions. I'm just curious because you made it a point to highlight how much the special election is going to cost, but I'm just curious how much of the special election going to cost for the wellness center you still got to vote on? Just curious. Do you guys know that? Do I, I'm sorry, do I have a number for how much a wellness center is going to cost? Special election that, that we call the record applied to gain all those things. That was the one that was kind of Oh, you mean the first one? Yeah, no, the second one. Really. Who says it's going to be a special election? Yeah. It could be on a general election. Well, it, the wrong is we're going to have to vote on it. We have to petition it. We're going to have a. It could be an item on our general election. It could be, yeah. Come on. And I would always prefer that. It, it, you know, uh, how much is going to be on this special election cost? We're going to get this $20,000 without hesitation. I hope you're a woman. Buck really gave a presentation on changing things, and it, it wasn't all that receptive. So, I mean, to me, to, to highlight that, it's almost like you're, you know, insinuating people more to a sure, you no, know, this is going to cost this money. We just only $8,000 now without any hesitation in volume like that. Yeah. So, what is your recommendation? What do you think? I think what, right to answer this question. Uh, people were too. They won't they yeah, appoint until and they will be able to. That will happen. So even if we appoint site, if we said tonight, hey, let's appoint somebody, they could come in here tomorrow or whatever time frame they have with signatures. We scrap our deal and then we have an election. I mean, it's that simple. So, and you had a question about why I brought it forward. I'll absolutely answer that question. I brought it forward because it's public information and it's my job to present information to the council so that they can make the most informed decision. If you'll notice on the housing assessment, there was a public discussion on an agenda and a public discussion with the elected officials to decide if that was a good way to go. The amount of the special election, it was important that they knew that so that they're having a public discussion up here to decide one of two options of which way they were gonna go. And it's my job to present that information to them. That's why it was there. You know, the, all the questions that are geared towards that. And then, you know, I just watch and observe and I just see without hesitation. There's like nothing maybe there's not really any questions on it, but I mean, I like that for a second election. Probably, we're, we're, we're bringing up an invoice. And, you know, I'm just highlighting that. This is what it's really, you know, highlighting how much that special election is about. But I'll tell you what, if People were to do one of the whole things collected, much like put the wellness center. I'll make sure it's done. That's awesome. We have a word on that. <laughs> it's your right as a citizen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah.
pictures that we are in that one. Okay, so council has a decision to make. I'll make a motion to do a special election. Okay, that motion. So the only thing with the special election, and I was the one who was for that last time, um, because I thought we had enough time, and we still do. Um, but the only thing with the special election this time, and I'm kind of nervous about is literally it's only four months that they'll be to sit there and so by the time they get to know everything I mean they'll have to rerun and that kind of sucks um I feel like for them so I don't know so that's why I feel like if we appoint someone I mean we do it at this normal city council meeting right yeah people can still come yeah absolutely there. it's all transparent everybody and I'm the same way I I um, was not for it, but I think just the amount of time, it's it's almost not worth going through all the effort to get a special election. Um, and I also feel that, yeah, if Ward 2 is interested, they'll petition for it and we'll be right back to doing the election. So, um, but that's okay. They've kind of then said it's okay. I mean, they're agreeing to spend the money for that right. um, and supporting us to use the money but it really is a short amount of time. Will the councilman get, or a councilwoman get appointed and then the special election would happen? Or what would that time frame be? Like, would we be able to appoint somebody? Well, or correct. if we decided to appoint, I would imagine if, the, if Ward 2 wants to do a petition, they still have the opportunity to bring that in before we set anybody. Okay. So, right. yeah, they have, it's, I mean, it comes down to this. You can appoint, and if the people in second ward want to come in with a petition, they will come in, we'll scrap the appointment, and we'll have an election. That's just really, sure. Tom? So, so the dates, I've got this graphic here, but people can submit the resume and the letter of interest would be due by the 26th of yep. April. Yeah, yeah, we will post it. Uh, we're required by law to post it in the paper. That'll be on April 13th. Uh, I mean, they could, if they hear about it, they can do it beforehand, sure. But we, we're required by Iowa law to post it in the paper. So that'll be April 13th with a deadline accepting those at noon on the 26th of April. So then the next council meeting after the 26th would be when you would review those and make a selection? There, well, there could be, there'll be a public discussion. It'll be on the agenda. And it's up to the elected officials whether they make a decision that night. But it could happen that night. Yes, sir. So we could have a councilman to fill out vacancy that quick. And let's well, if, if, if they made a decision on May 1st, that council person could be seated May 15th. Yeah. That's when the, the next council meeting, the, the, this would be discussed and voted on would be May 15th. No, May 1st, they'll it'll be discussed. Okay. And if if the elected officials so choose to make a decision that night and point somebody, they would be seated and sworn in at the May 15th city council meeting. But the, that whole idea could be scrapped if somebody files a petition to have a special election. So that could happen prior to us appointing anybody or even interviewing anybody. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So anyway, we had a motion on the table. There's no second, so that motion dies. Is there a new motion? I'll make a motion to appoint somebody. I'll second that. Okay. Call the roll. Foreman? Yes. Hilsabat? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Berg? Yes. Steins? No. Okay. okay, my second item, uh, at the request of Councilman Steins, uh, we brought forward that bill for the uh, trailer that we talked about at the last council meeting. Uh, that bill is for 1250 That trailer is used to haul around the city-owned fence down at the 8th and Story. Uh, hand it to the elected officials. Did you have any questions? Can I get some background? Chris, you're here. You were involved in the purchasing. Can you give us some background on how that was uh, decided you needed it? Uh, what was the purchasing process, design process, stuff like that? I'm glad you're here so you can describe yeah, this a little yeah, more. Excellent. Um, and thanks for asking. Um, so basically, you know, you guys all understand volunteers are hard to come by. <laughs> They're hard to come by these days. Um, just not a civil duty that a lot of people um, do much anymore. So, so the volunteers, um, so we closed our streets last year at two o'clock and it took us literally up until about 4.30 to get all set up and be ready to go. 
we made the decision as a committee to buy our tables this year. So we didn't have to, we had to have three men volunteer the tables to keep our um, friendly happy. And quite frankly, I feel like I'm a fairly strong woman, but I'm not. A so it took three men away from our setup to go do that. So we decided to purchase the tables this year. Thank you to a lot of volunteer, uh, a lot of people that sponsored those. We put the, um, I, I sent out the committee and they did an awesome job. And within um, uh, four or five days, we had 15 or fifteen people that sponsored to have their names on tables downtown. So um, with that, in order to, again, cut down our lead time of having to set up, uh, we had decided that it would be a good idea to have some type of cart mover to put them fences on. If not, it took two volunteers, especially more so women, the men can keep carrying one, but the women had to have two people on each end to carry each gate. We have about 40 gates. What are 40 gates? How many? 54. 54. Okay, gates that needed set up. So again, that takes a lot of time for us to do that. So we put the plan in motion to, to have a gate mover um, design. It'll put 10, um, 10 gates on the cart mover and then it'll wheel those around. It was basically to accommodate the downtown businesses by changing the time. We shortened the setup time so we didn't have to close the streets. Yep. Early. So, an hour. so we gave them, a, we bought them another hour. They mo most of them closed between four and five anyway. So we bought them that extra hour. We have, you know, that committee has done everything that we can to work in tandem with downtown. We've modified our dates. We've done whatever they've asked us to do within reason so that we could still have that celebration. But um, that's what it was for. Right. Is there a place to keep this out of the weather stuff? Um, that's a good question. Like, well, it's powder coated and, and weatherproofed. Uh, it, okay. We can keep it outside with the gates. The gates sit outside too. Um, Stephen Yoakum, who did who did did all the metal work down there at the green space, is the one that designed and built this mm -hmm. in his metal shop. Mm -hmm. And he used understand that that twelve hundred dollars doesn't even cover the labor for building that thing. He used pipe and wheels and stuff that he had in his shop to build it. So it's basically the material cost for the steel. So, um, and it's, you know, and one, one. Open to anybody that runs the downtown green space yeah. and then all. And has used as a fence. Right by the gate. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's city property. Yeah, so it's open it's, to anyone. To yeah, it's city property. It's one, one concern I do have is that we weren't approached about this before it was all put into motion. I just hope we understand that. So that's why it gives me a little bit more time. Sure. Uh, that would be know. that would be on me because we talked about this and I told them to go ahead and build that. We were gonna we had to have that anyway. And we were we were just gonna cut a few corners and stuff. We're operating on a shoestring budget here. We barely break even. And I know you think the beer sales and stuff, but we have a lot of expenses that go along with this. Uh, the, the music and entertainment's gone up. Everything's gone up. So uh, that was just a, I should have come. I should have mentioned it beforehand. I told her. I said I think I can take this to council. I think council will approve this. And so we went ahead and ordered it because it took Stephen a lot of time. He works in the ag business. He couldn't even meet the meeting today. Make the meeting today because he's uh, he had to build it in the office. So I just I went ahead and did that. So it, that's not really Chris. That's me. So you okayed it, and so if we don't okay it, then you you're paying. You mean? Yeah, I can do that if I need. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I donate. <laughs> that you get stuck. Let me be clear. This has not been made yet. No, it's made. Okay, it is made. Okay, so sorry. It's the way you phrase it. Just sorry. I, I mean, no, it's made. And um, if you don't approve it, it'll be something the CBB owns. I, I mean, we never lose the contract. I'm not sure what we're going to agree with it. And, and what I can do is I can have Stephen send me a picture of it, and I can forward that to everybody if you want to And if the city can use it for various reasons. Yeah, we're going to use it. Makes sense. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. I get it, the transparency thing, but um, I mean, if, yeah. That's why it's going to help. So that's why I'm glad that you're here to explain the entire process, um, everything like that. But 
in the future, we definitely need to know ahead of time about this stuff before, so we can make an informed decision ahead of time. That's by request. And the, the financing of this bill, where would that be? Economic development. Why not? Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All the roll. Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Fine? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Okay, number six, consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that you'd like removed and discussed separately? And if not, I need a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Call the roll. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Signs? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Hilsebeck? Yes. Number seven, ordinances A, second reading, ordinance 2286 to allow the city of Boone, Iowa to change the stop sign regulations on Hancock Drive and South Lynn Street, chapter 65, section 65.02. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Signs? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Hilsebeck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Okay, number eight, I have no comments this evening. Number nine, council member comments. I do just a brief um, question for council. Um, at the, I attended, I think it mentioned one of the public forums for the candidates and um, it was really well attended. A lot of people there and they ask a lot of questions. Um, Kyle, you'll agree with me. They, well, they, they ask a lot of questions and, and uh, I think what I found was there's just a lot of, lack of information on a lot of topics that we could be sharing. And so what I've done is I uh, made a list, compiled kind of a list of a lot of the questions that came up at that public forum, as well as what people have continued to ask. And I've uh, typed those up and I'm just wondering how the council um, would like to proceed. I think it would be a good idea to kind of respond to those and put that out. And we can either do that and, and um, what I would like is that everybody, you know, I'll share, I mean, we'll pass it out and everybody will get a, a set of them and we can look them over. Um, what I think is how would we disseminate that? Would we just create a handout that we would uh, make public information they could pick up? Uh, would we, kind of put those uh, comments and and I know you haven't seen them so it's probably hard for you to make a decision on on the type of things but um, also we could we could uh, have a, a forum and and open it up and and go through those questions and respond or we could put it on our website so um, something to think about there and and I know it would probably help if you saw a list of the questions um, there are about 25 of them that um, were asked. So, you know, and just a lot of general general kind of things that um, the information would be good to get out. So think on that and and but I will comment as well. I listened as well. And and when you have candidates putting out false information, that doesn't help either. Correct. And so you have no idea what you're talking about as far as taxing and, and those types of things. Listen, I want facts out there. And I think our auditor just proved that we do a great job, but there there was stuff being said that it's, it was ridiculous. And that's why so that, that helps makes people go, oh, I wonder. So maybe it is a good idea. We'll put some info out. And, and have everybody look at it. We can kind of discuss and make sure we've got, and Bill, I've already sent him a copy. And so I mean, to make sure that we, we get the accurate information out and just real brief responses. But I think it might be a really good way to share some of that information because there is some misinformation or misunderstanding on what we're doing at Times and maybe maybe it's something we could address along the way in the newsletter or something that comes out. And right. See, we could certainly and then gives a concept work to triage or something. I I've uh, actually answered three quarters of them, yeah. <clears throat> but the problem with trying to answer them, uh, I you mentioned that on some of them maybe if I think you're right interpretation. Uh, how do I? without follow up and things like that. So if you if you I will tell you that if the elected folks decide to have a public forum information, I'd be more than happy oh. to come there and answer these questions. We have a public forum information twice a month. I know. They can come here and ask any question they want under public comments. Oh. But they would rather do that 
But listen, when you've got people saying things like, why would they build that housing development there? That's a that's a direct hit from a tornado. Who, who makes these things up? I mean, you can't, no one knows that. Or they've got, Boone's got two firefighters. Uh, no, we don't, we've got more than that. I mean, just things that are just, you know, I'll just, it's hard. About two or three. Um, why doesn't the city fix up the railroad viaduct by high V? It's bad shape. I mean, we've heard that. The railroad um, owns ownership. Well, <laughs> I know, we know that. But will Fairway help fund a new community center if we reuse the old Y building? Uh, what's the Main Street program? How do we know what's going on with council? I don't do Zoom meetings or attend the meetings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right there. So, I mean, you know, those, those are the kind of things that came up. And I went, okay, we could certainly respond the to that. That we can continue to do is push people to sign up for the e-notify and really get get pinged every time in your inbox for anything that, that comes out. That's still a certain audience that well that goes online. I mean well, we've well, been battling this for four years. We we used every informational venue that was available to us in Boom. The newspaper, TWBG, websites, social media, the blitz, you have to be and patient, we still yeah. caught and reiterate it's the perfect example of the snow ordinance. We've had it for years, okay? We don't want to tell anybody's car. I hate it when we tell. But we have a snow ordinance in effect because we have less employees, it's easier to plow the streets when there's no cars on it, less damage, we're more efficient, the streets are cleaner, and we do it in a better amount of time. Okay, we tow somebody's car. They call me. Um, I had no idea you guys had a snow ordinance. Um, I don't go to meetings. I don't listen to the radio. I don't get a newspaper. I don't get your water. I don't get the water bill or whatever. I go, well, other than me knocking on your door and telling you, I don't know how else you would know because we're doing the best we can trying to get that info out. And I listen, I don't want to tell anybody's car. I hate that. And, but it's always our fault and we're trying to be more efficient for public works so they can get their job done. But yet it always turns around that we didn't tell anybody. And I agree. We're never going to get it all covered. But to me, this is one more step in, yeah. in kind of putting it out and and what a, um, we can send it out to everybody and then you can take a look at them. I think in a less direct way, Bill has the questions that you're talking about, you know, in, uh, that could be fodder for future newsletters, things to work in as we go along and stuff like that. But again, whether or not people read it, one specific example, something you brought up with the, you know, things having to do with the railroad and the viaduct and the ownership things that go along with that, somebody can say that and then they'll be corrected immediately you know, by somebody else out in the community, and they just won't listen to that. And there's nothing you can really do about that except for be patient. Right. Now it's frustrating, but um, can I just have? Well, I can work with Eric from Concept Works uh, to put it out on you notify these questions and our answers. Yeah, it may, it, there you go. I mean, the elected officials want to review these before I send them. I, I think that'd be good. So we're talking in facts, correct facts. facts. I don't care. Put them out there. Okay, so I want people to know the truth, and I want them to know. I will do my best to get them completed. Like I said, I mean, I'm fight. We weren't going to bring this up, just like the railroad. I am fighting with them right now because we were given somewhat of a verbal commitment that if we donated to this overpass, they would slide their trains out east further. I think it's gotten worse. Now, there's some things to go along with that. They still need to close courts and whatever the case may be, but it's frustrating because, and I'm sure you folks get calls. I get calls all the time. And I get calls from railroaders that are on the train that want to stop the train where they should, but they said they make them pull it in. You know, so they're even, they understand it, but we don't, we're in for that project over $600,000 of city ta tax dollars and not one inch of that is in the city of Boone. But we did it for the public safety side of it to get police cars, ambulances, fire trucks to the north side in a time, because someone's gonna die, I'm telling you. The train's going to hold somebody up and it's going to be a bad deal. Not to mention the time we watched there, a kid pulled his bicycle underneath the train because he got tired of waiting. Those are all things that we talk about, but something's going to happen. And I'm going to fight them till the end until they move them damn trains out further and at least open up what they should. Mm -hmm. And it's on the, it's on Bill the, gets it's mad at me. At the hit list for DC. Bill gets mad at me because I call Bill and vent to him. And I don't mean to. <laughs> I want the trains moved. Yeah. It's not fair to the people on the other side. We can't get to them. If you wanted to put a blurb in about what you're doing, I think that would be well written. Yeah. And I also want to take the signs. They say, call that 800 number. If you guys went up and looked at that, number 10 if, font. if you're the first car, you can read it. 
if you're not the first car, you can't read it. So I wanna turn the signs and even make our own signs about this big, waiting for a train, call 1-800, you know. You should stand out there with the sign. I would. Actually. <laughs> Pretty pat. We, <laughs> listen, we traveled all over the state chasing the DOT commission to get this thing moved up. Now it's moved up, project's done. They, they need to fulfill their commitment. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Any other, where are we at? Public comments. Public comments. <laughs> Public comments? <laughs> Public comments? Uh, no, I was just going to come in. Signs for saying notification really does. I mean, it really does. And people need to come and get the information themselves. It's here. It's here in this building. And everybody has a representative. And if they don't like who or don't feel they're getting answers from the representative, there's two at large council people. So to accommodate, I mean, I agree getting the information out there, but but these people really do just like to do this and complain and not really take action. So you're wasting so much of your time because you don't know, get paid to do all of that kind of work. And the fact that you need to hire somebody just to answer some of the media questions. Yeah. <laughs> Alvin? Yeah, so in light of your recent conversation here, just purchase a dozen Superman keys, problem solved. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would like to revisit for a couple minutes the uh, request that I understand there's a burr or two under people's saddle from, from past. You can't fix the past. The folks we can look forward to the future. Uh, the difference between five thousand and ten thousand dollars is pretty obvious that that's five thousand dollars. But I would like to ask you to consider really jumping into this and supporting it. I don't know how much money we put into the uh, Fireworks this fall, but by the way, which is a great thing, and boom, that brings people and boom. Is it five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars? I don't know. But folks, that's up in that's that's up in open thirty minutes. Buffer Valley lasts all weekend. That brings people in from various communities, probably from various parts of the state. I hope our council was a little we'll gun over in that. Don't on the gun. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Any other public comments? If not, this meeting is adjourned.